Hey guys, this is Bang for Buck PC Gamer here. I recently made a few changes to my PC, which I showed in my last video. I bought myself an Intel i7 4790K processor, an Asus Maximus 7 Ranger motherboard, and 16 gigabytes of Corsair Avengers Pro Series DDR3, running at 2400 megahertz. And the reason I made this upgrade was to try and utilize and get the most out of my GTX 980 Ti. I was a bit limited with uh, the clock speed of my Intel i7-3770 non-K. Now usually non-K processors are locked, but um, I, had a, I had a feature on my motherboard which had a non-K overclocking mode and this allowed me to get a 4.3 mega and 4.3 gigahertz overclock out of my i7-3770. Um, but from moving from a GTX 980 to a 980 Ti, I quickly realized that um, I was kind of bottlenecking my GTX 980 Ti just a bit, not too much but enough for me to notice that I should be getting more performance. So I've gone ahead and made the upgrade and uh, I'm about to share with you um, the, the performance results of my comparison. Now I just want to state and just to make sure there's no confusion, this is not meant to be a fair test in any way, shape or form, this is literally me showing you the performance increase that I've gained from spending that money on these upgrades so just bear that in mind I don't want you commenting in, in the comment section saying oh it's not fair you're not at the same clock speed this this and the other um, it's literally me showing you the results I've got from um, the new hardware I've um, bought so hopefully you guys will enjoy that um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test a few games which will be crisis free um, project cars and the witcher 3 and I'll also show a video rendering comparison between the two processors and just to see how much of a difference there is so I'm gonna shut up now and you guys can just kick back and watch the rest of the video go, go, go. So as you can see the Intel i7-4790K making a quite a big increase over my i7-3770 with an average of 27 frames per second increase.
Soda 4790K, HNA 18 frames per second, improvement over the i7-3770 in Crisis 3. So when it comes to the Witcher 3, there's only a 1.53 difference in frames per second, despite the huge difference in core clock speeds between the two CPUs. So it just goes to show that not every game requires a very fast CPU to get the most out of your game. So that's pretty much it for the games. As you can see, the Intel i7-4790K overclocked up 4.7 GHz does give me a decent improvement in some of the games and getting a bit more out of my overclocked GTX 980Ti. Um, in The Witcher 3, however, that wasn't the same story. There was not really any improvement and some games won't really show any yields and some games will, so that's just the way it goes. So I'm going to move on to a multi-threaded application like my video editing software, which I use is Cyberlink Power Director. So what I'm going to do is open one of my old projects and render it at 60 FPS um, at 1080p. And I'm doing the same for both uh, CPUs and obviously whichever CPU gets the job done first is definitely the faster one. Intel i7-4790K doing a tremendous job at video rendering at 1080p. So that's a 9 minute 50 video rendered at 3 minute 38 seconds. And it's clearly a lot faster than my Intel i7-3770 at 4.2 GHz. I'm just going to forward this now and complete the test so you can see the difference in times between the two CPUs. And as you can see there's about 1.7 1 minute 7 seconds difference between the two CPUs so that's uh, 
not so much, but it's definitely an increase, which is uh, always welcomed. So that pretty much wraps things up for my comparison between my old system and my new system. As you can see, the Intel i7-4790K at 4.7 GHz does give me a, a decent performance increase in some um, games, but obviously this won't happen in every single game I play. So overall, I think the system looks pretty good and it shows an improvement, so I can't really complain. Maybe about the price, but apart from that, everything else is working pretty well, so I'm happy with it. Temps are a little higher than I would like, running at about 75 degrees at max load. But, um, you know, these chips are pretty hot, so uh, you got to deal with that. And um, I'm enjoying the performance, so I can't really complain too much. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video.